to be testing standby power of a USB mains adapter. Um, in particular, this Amazon mains adapter here. Um, we're going to be using it offload and determining, determining how much power it uses um, in standby mode. So the equipment being used is the single phase breakout back box. Um, this is a Newton's fourth design box. Provides easy access um, to the voltage and the current uh, for the power analyzer. And it also offers a universal uh, breakout plug um, for a range of uh, devices. In this, in, in this case, we are using the UK mains uh, designed mains adapter. So the power analyzer in use is the PPA1500. Um, today we have a three phase version, but we are using it in single phase mode. Uh, we're only going to be measuring single phase power. Of course, if you are using this in a production environment you, or, a, or a test house environment, then what you can do is use every channel testing three devices at a time. Um, so, so providing three independent measurements without a problem. So with the instrument turned off, what we're going to do is run through the entire setup sequence in order to measure standby power. Um, and this is in accordance with EN50564 or the old version which is IEC62301. Um, we have software available that, that uh, automates the test, uh, but this is the, the manual setup of the instrument in order to measure standby power. So let's turn the instrument on. You'll notice very quick boot up time. This is a custom operating system developed by ourselves. So what we have here is phase one being displayed, but as this is a three phase analyzer and I'm only using a single phase today, I'm going to turn off, single, uh, turn off the second and third phases and use single phase one. So that's just using the first phase of the instrument, which is what we're connected to on the rear of the instrument. So after making that setting, um, we can just have a quick look before we go into anything else in the application menu. Now in the application menu, there is actually a standby power mode to enter. Now what this does is it um, extends the averaging slightly and enables the instrument to synchronize its window upon the current waveform. And that's very important, uh, especially when the current uh, pulses are not synchronous with the voltage cycle with the uh, 50 Hertz. So we've got 50 Hertz mains here. We've got a current of 1.2 milliamps. Now this is a 20 amp RMS unit with all of the PPA 1500s. What we have is the option to change the ranging system from a 20 amp to divide by 10 to a 2 amp ranging system, 2 amp RMS, which divides the bottom range of 100 milliamps by 10. So if we put internal times 10 there, the bottom range becomes 10 milliamps and that's much more suitable for a 1.2 milliamp uh, signal here. So if I've just changed that now, we can see that we're now on the 30 milliamp range. The reason for that is going to be the crest factor. So if we just look in the RMS menu here, let's have a look at the crest factor. So the crest factor on the current here is 8 7.5 bouncing around that's a huge crest factor and with other USB adapters you can expect crest factors of 12 13 somewhere around there so it's important when choosing an analyzer to ensure that the manufacturer guarantees accuracy upon high crest factors it's common to only specify accuracies up to a crest factor of 6 for example so what we're going to expect when we look in the scope is quite a peaky current waveform and a sinusoidal voltage. Now, the crest factor is 1.39. That's because it's a flat top UK mains voltage. Um, of course, in a test environment, you would be using this with a sinusoidal AC source. Um, and in another test later on in the tutorial series, we're going to be using the Newton's fourth N4A03, 3kVA, AC power source, which is it's very pure sinusoidal waveform, perfect for a test environment, for standards compliance. Now here we go, here we can see it's a very low RMS and a very peaky current, 
here's the UK mains voltage, just change that. Uh, the trigger is on current. So we can change that trigger down and we can get a nice steady scope trace. So you can also um, screen print this if you wish um, straight to USB. So let's go back into the power mode. There's not much else to do now with the configuration. The instrument is ready to perform the measurement um, and it will be very stable. We can see 105 milliwatts here, very stable result, even on that very peaky, um, really fluctuating uh, current signal. 1.7 milliamps, 244 volts, and 107, 106 milliwatts there, very steady. If you want to look at quickly the harmonics, <clears throat> we can have a look in the harmonic menu. Um, it will show us the distortion on the voltage and the current. And if we can look at it in graph, we can see huge distortion on the current. It's very peaky, non-sinusoidal. So that was standby power measurement of a USB adapter, um, very low power, with no problem with the internal shunt. Now if powers go even lower than this, um, what we can do is use an external shunt um, from the M4L range, a HF003 for example, is a 3 amp RMS shunt and that would provide excellent measurements down to microamps.